Hey guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens and today I just wanted to do a quick video because I'm ready to transplant some of my hydroponic plants into soil and I know that this is a big question that I've gotten in the past so I just wanted to show you my process for when I'm transplanting from a water only hydroponic system into soil. These are into containers today. It's still February here in Northern Michigan and way too cold to plant anything outside. So I wanna get these guys established into containers, which I will then take out into the garden this spring. Now, the primary reason that I'm taking down my hydroponic systems today is just because I'm making room for my seed starting setup so we can get going for the planting season. Um, so slowly but surely, I'm shutting down each of my three and a half gallon and HTG buckets and transplanting each of the individual plants that I do want to keep. So without further ado, let's get started. I've shut down the water pumps and have detached the lines for all of my buckets. And in these two buckets here are the smaller plants that I do want to transplant into containers. This guy right here is uh, strawberries, so I'm going to get these into a hanging basket so they're a little easier to manage. And the ones behind me are a couple smaller vegetables uh, like kale and leafy greens, as well as a peppermint plant. Uh, the peppermint plant is the, is the primary one that I want to plant in the house just because it looks so nice to have in the kitchen there. So we're going to start with the strawberry plants here. Some of these strawberries are planted in Rockwell cubes and then there's a couple of them that are actually just freely sitting in um, the clay pebbles there. So depending on what medium they're in, that will affect how I ultimately transplant them into their pots. Let's go ahead and grab this entire lid here and we'll take it over to our planting station. So first and foremost, you might notice that I chose some relatively small plants to transplant into soil. There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, first off, I'm not going to put these outside right away. I have limited space indoors, so I did need to select some of the smaller plants that will keep to a certain size container. Strawberries are a really good candidate for that. And the second reason is for some of our larger plants, like tomatoes or peppers, once those roots are so established in that bucket and they're large enough that they're completely spreading out through that net pot, it's really tricky to get those out of there without damaging the roots enough to affect the growth of the plant. So if you are growing hydroponic plants with the intention of transplanting into soil or outside at a later date, Keep in mind that you're going to want to choose a smaller plant that is going to withstand the transplantation process a little bit better than a larger plant would. So starting out with our tomatoes today, these nut pots uh, by HTG Supply are super handy because they can actually individually fit in these lids, which makes it really easy to work with them and do things like transplant them after the work, after the fact. My first step with this little strawberry plant who does have a couple fresh strawberries on it, which is so fun to see in the month of February when there's snow on the ground. So my first step is actually gonna to be to dump out as many of these clay pebbles as I can. I have a strainer here because I do reuse my clay pebbles. Typically, I just place them in boiling water, um, usually in a large batch all at once, and then I let them dry thoroughly, package them back up, and I can use them again next season when I start my hydroponic setup again. So I'm just gonna gently tip this upside down. And this plant here is not in a Rockwell cube, which makes it so easy. So I've got the roots, everything's in one piece. I'm going to set these clay pebbles aside. The next thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna trim off some of these leaves here. The transplantation process is a little stressful for these plants, so we wanna make sure that the plants can retain any nutrition that they do have and send it up to the healthier parts of the plant. So I'm gonna cut off any dead or dying leaves just to make sure that we're maintaining all of that nutrient volume in the center of the plant. From there, I have the container that I'm going to plant my strawberries in. This is just a simple hanging basket with a drainage tray on the bottom. Strawberries do really well in hanging baskets and they're very easy to transport from area to area. So if you are growing indoor hydroponic strawberries, a hanging basket is a great candidate for transplantation. I have a base soil mix in here already and this is just a normal potting soil mix with perlite and a little bit of organic matter. And then on top here, I have a peat moss, garden soil, and sand blend that I'm going to use as a top layer for my planter. So filling that up until there's just about a two inch gap at the top, I'm gonna make just a little hole for this guy to rest in. And I'm going to repeat that process with the other three strawberry plants that I have here. Now 
These last two strawberry plants that I'm working with are the ones that are embedded in a small Rockwell cube, which you can kind of see here. So the Rockwell cubes are a little unique to work with, depending on if you started a seed in Rockwell cube or a cutting, which these were actually a cutting or a runner, a strawberry runner, um, you may or may not be able to actually get the roots out of the Rockwell cube. I try to get as many of the roots out of the Rockwell cube as I can, simply because Rockwell cubes are not organic and I like to garden organically. Um, but if you're planting this in the garden, just know that these will not break down into the soil. So it is something that you would have to go back and retrieve at the end of the season. So I'm going to try to gently pull away as much of this Rockwell cube as I can, and it should pull away um, okay. If you feel any resistance, it's likely a larger root, and you're going to want to probably leave that piece there. For the most part, this is pulling off. So on this one, I was able to remove the entire Rockwell cube there so I can plant this guy just like I planted the others. However, this one here is really embedded. So I'm going to really want to be careful teasing those roots out of there. And I was actually able to get that one free too. So we can go ahead and plant all of these right in that planter. All right, I'm going to finish chopping it off with my peat moss, sand, and garden soil blend here. Okay, my strawberries are fully planted. Now, there is no fertilizer in this soil mix as of right now. I like to hold off on adding any fertilizer until my newly transplanted plants can fully adjust to their new soil environment. One thing to keep in mind, it might be tempting to water the heck out of these plants because you think, oh, they're really used to being submerged in water. I was using the DWC method, so the roots just hung in a nutrient solution there. While that may be tempting, consistent moisture is absolutely a good thing, but waterlogging these can definitely cause root rot, keeping in mind that there is no uh, pump that's oxygenating these roots directly down here. So water daily at the beginning. Uh, you don't need to waterlog it. If water is coming out at the bottom here, that's probably an indication that I'm actually overwatering these plants. But for the first week, I really just want to keep an eye on these guys daily, see how they're doing, monitor their progress and after that I can go ahead and use a granular slow release fertilizer to add some of those nutrients back into the root systems. And then I have my second batch of plants here that I want to go ahead and transplant. We have a couple varieties of leafy greens as well as a very healthy peppermint plant that I'm most excited about. So we're going to start with the leafy greens here and just as just as an example down at the bottom here, you might notice there's a little bit of brown residue. Um, commonly, I would definitely call this root rot, which is unusual for my plants here. Um, but this is certainly something that I don't want to transplant into the soil with this plant. So I am going to go ahead and snip off any roots that I feel are affected by this. This will slow down the growth of the plant temporarily, but the plant should be boosted once it gets established into the soil. You just want to make sure you're not transplanting any damaged or diseased roots into your new environment. I'm going to dump off these clay pebbles just like I did with my strawberries. And this guy here was actually started by seed in this Rockwell cube. So these roots are likely to be very, very established in this Rockwell cube. Let's see if we can shave off at least a little bit of it. That's what he looks like right in the middle there. Oh, and he popped right out. All right, we were lucky on that one. <laughs> You can see the tap root going straight down the center of that root mass there. So I want that centered in my new container. These guys are just a leafy green. They don't need too much space. So I'm gonna use my three inch round pots here. I do have some of that heavier potting mix down at the bottom. That includes the perlite. I like to have perlite on the lower layer because it's such a good aid when it comes to water drainage. But I am gonna use the top part as 
my garden soil, sand, and peat moss mix here. I'm gonna make sure that I can get the taproot neatly settled vertically. And I'll fill in the rest of the pot with my other mix. Now, it is not uncommon at all for hydroponic grown plants to be really floppy and top heavy, especially if you don't have any fan or circulation on them. So I get these um, little trellises here and I, I'll leave the link in the description below. They're super helpful. I use them in my hydroponic setups and in my potted setups as well. And I'm basically just going to use this as a support for the leaf system while the roots get established. Now, after a certain amount of time, once the plant gets large enough, I shouldn't need to use this trellis anymore, but it's really helpful when you're first transplanting your, your hydroponic plants. And the same watering rules on this, I'm gonna definitely water daily and keep a close eye on them, but I don't wanna waterlog those roots at all. I'm going to repeat that same process with my other two plants. And last but not least, my favorite mint plant. I'm very lucky that the rock wool actually came off of all of the roots of my plants. You might be able to see there's still a little bit of rock wool residue right at the base there. I don't want to pluck that off. I don't want to take the risk of injuring the roots that high up. However, um, in a perfect world, I would like to remove that as well. This is just going in a container, so I know it's going to be fine when I dispose of the soil and make sure it's in the garbage and not out in the garden. All of my plants have been successfully transplanted into their soil-based containers. So general rule of thumb at this point is I want to check on these at least daily if not twice a day morning and night is always a good practice to have since I am not removing these from the current growing environment meaning they're going to get the same amount of light the same temperature same amount of airflow everything's the same because they're in the same growing room really I don't run too much of a risk of shocking the plant. Now, if you're taking your plants from a hydroponic setup that's in a controlled grow tent and you're moving them outside or to a windowsill with less light, et cetera, you're going to want to keep a closer eye on your plants um, for something we call shock and transplantation shock can happen when the environment changes too rapidly or too much. So this does run the risk of, of course, causing that transplantation shock. Um, some key tips for that is keep your environment similar so if it's 70 degrees in your grow room try to put your plant somewhere else that it's 70 degrees if your grow room has very little airflow you don't definitely don't want to put it in a windy area outside um, and sunlight is actually one of the top things that can shock and burn a plant sunlight is different than the LED grow lights that we're using in our grow tents so if you are moving your freshly transplanted plants outside you want to use a process called hardening off and if you're not familiar with what hardening off is, I'll uh, connect a article about it in the description below. But essentially hardening off is the process of gradually acclimating an indoor plant into an outdoor environment by placing it outside for just a couple hours every day and eventually increasing that time until the plant can stay outside full time. Like I said, it's winter here, everything's going to stay indoors. So with the exception of this guy who's moving out to my kitchen, the rest of the plants should be able to establish roots in their new soil environment without too much stress. Now I get to clear out my space and get it prepped for my late winter seed planting adventures. If you are interested in learning more about hydroponic gardening or seed starting, definitely like and subscribe to our channel. The next several weeks are gonna be focused entirely on garden prep for spring and starting our seeds so that we can start the season with mature plants in just a couple months. If you have any questions about the process that I showed you here today or any questions on my hydroponic processes in general, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. I always love to hear from you guys. As always, I sure do appreciate you spending some time with me here today. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.